Over the past 25 years, the resource-rich eastern provinces of the Democratic Republic of the Congo have served as operating bases for multiple rebel groups. The March 23 movement, commonly known as M23, is among more than 100 armed groups operating in this region where conflict is escalating, especially in recent months. For some, M23 is an expression of popular anger over a dysfunctional Congolese government, corruption and abuses, abuses that historically have been particularly felt by Congolese of Rwandan origin. But for others, M23 is the latest in a long line of Rwandan-linked rebel movements that represented a proxy for the economic or security ambitions of Rwanda. In this episode of African Biographics, we look at the origins of Congo's M23 rebels who are currently wreaking havoc in the country. The DRC suffered two destructive conflicts following the collapse of Zaire from the early 1990s and the overspill of regional conflicts, notably Angola's long-running civil war and the aftermath of the Rwandan genocide onto its territory. The first conflicts in the Congo saw the decades-long dictatorship of Mobutu overthrown by a rebel coalition largely based in the east of the country with the strong backing of Rwanda, Uganda and Burundi and the tacit approval of wider African and international opinion. Mobutu was replaced by Laurent Desiree Kabila, a veteran rebel widely seen as a puppet for Rwandan and Ugandan interests. The Second War in the Congo, which started around 1998, was launched following Laurent Kabila's rejection of Rwandan and Ugandan control, an attempt by Rwandan troops to overthrow him, and attacks on Congolese civilians of Rwandan origin. During this time, a rebel coalition, the Congolese Rally for Democracy RCD, was born, again with its roots in the east of the country, and again with significant Rwandan and Ugandan backing. Uganda also sponsored a separate rebel group, the Movement for the Liberation of Congo, which was led by former businessman Jean-Pierre Bemba, who became vice president of the DRC following the 2002 Luanda Agreement. This time around, however, the DRC's other neighbors, who were gathered under the banner of the Southern African Development Commission, SADAC, intervened to protect Kabila's administration and also help Congo's largely dysfunctional army. Congo's National Army is also known as the FARDC. By 1999, this conflict had reached a stalemate with the United Nations mission deployed to monitor the front lines. Furthermore, relations between Rwanda and Uganda broke down to the point that their armed forces fought battles over the strategically and economically important city of Kisangani in the DRC. The RCD rebel group would split into a Rwandan-backed wing, the RCD Goma, and a Ugandan-backed wing, the RCD Kisangani Movement of Liberation, RCD KML. There were other rebel groups involved in the conflict at various points, and these included groups of the local self-defense militia, collectively known as Mai Mai, which often, though not exclusively, allied with the government. There was also the RCD National, a splinter group from the RCD KML, that eventually allied with the MLC. There was also the Democratic Forces for the Liberation of Rwanda, the FDLR, a Rwandan Hutu rebel group also based in Eastern Congo that includes some perpetrators of the 1994 Rwandan genocide. I'll touch on the FDLR a little bit more later. Of all these groups, the RCD Goma emerged as the most powerful of the original rebel movement and retained control of the regions over the border from their alleged primary backers, the Rwandan government. This area, which includes the provinces of North and South Kivu and the town of Goma, quickly evolved from a quiet lakeside resort to become the trading and political center of the rebellion. Amidst this chaos, Laurent Desiree Kabila was assassinated in 2001 and was succeeded by his son Joseph Kabila. A long-running peace process held largely under South Africa's stewardship finally came to fruition with the Sun City Accords of 2002. The transition in the Congo culminated with elections in 2006 which were won by Joseph Kabila. Unfortunately, these election results were not accepted by a significant proportion of the main rebel groups. Consequently, powerful RCD Goma units, which had also refused integration into the national military, once again launched a rebellion. 
In July 2006, these RRCD Goma combatants had been reconstituted as the National Congress for the Defense of the People, the CNDP, under the leadership of General Laurent Nkunda. A Congolese Tutsi born in Ruchuru, north of Goma, Nkunda had previously served in the Rwandan Patriotic Front, the RPF, the rebel force that deposed the government which perpetrated the 1994 genocide. Nkunda would later serve in the Rwandan-backed rebel coalition that installed Laurent Kabila as president of the DRC during the First Congo War. One of Laurent Nkunda's key men was Bosco Ntangada, a Rwandan-born Tutsi. Bosco Ntanganda also fought with the RPF in the early 1990s and participated in the overthrow of the Hutu-led Rwandan government in 1994 following the genocide. Bosco Ntanganda was a key player in various conflicts in the Great Lakes area, most notoriously during the intercommunal violence in Ituri in 2002 that briefly threatened to reach genocidal proportions. Bosco Ntangada was indicted by the International Criminal Court in 2006 for his role in this violence and was thought to have been acting, at least in part, to avoid arrest by the Congolese government in starting the new rebellion. As this conflict was going on, both the UN mission, which by now had become a fully-fledged peacekeeping operation, and Congo's FARDC were powerless to stop Ntanganda and his CNDP from retaking control of a significant proportion of the former RCD Goma-held territory, including lucrative mining sites and trade routes. Also during this time, direct Rwandan backing for the CNDP was widely alleged but never proven. After several months of heavy fighting and abortive peace talks, General Laurent Kunda was deposed by his deputy Bosco Ntanganda in January 2009 and on March 23 the same year, the CNDP rebels and the government signed a peace agreement providing for the integration of the CNDP into Congo's FARDC. This March 23, 2009 agreement also proposed action on a number of long-standing grievances felt by Kenya-Rwanda-speaking Congolese populations. However, even after the deal, the CNDP continued to maintain a parallel chain of command and the ex-CNDP units were never fully integrated into Congo's FARDC. Conflict broke out again in April 2012 when a faction of ex-CNDP rebels led by Bosco Ntanganda mutinied, announcing themselves as the March 23 movement, M23. This rebel group was named after the March 23, 2009 agreement which its supporters claimed had not been honored by the Congolese government. At this point in time, it's important to point out that both the CNDP and now the M23 rebels draw on a claim that they represented the particular and legitimate grievances of the Congolese people of Rwandan origin, notably Tutsi and other Banya Rwanda, who have over the years come under increased threat of genocidal violence. The M23 says that its mandate also includes the protection of these groups from violence, especially from the Forces for the Liberation of Rwanda, the FDLR. As mentioned earlier, the FDLR are a Rwandan Hutu rebel group long based in the DRC. The FDR was formed by elements of the military and militias that carried out the Rwandan genocide of 1994. Though it is now much smaller than in the past and now largely made up of recruits with no direct connection to the genocide, its senior leadership retains an extremist anti-Tutsi ideology. Another reason why the M23 said to be fighting was the resolution of long-standing uncertainty over the Banya Rwanda status as Congolese citizens. Congolese citizenship for them has been an issue for generations, exacerbated by Mobutu-era manipulation and poorly drafted legislation. Many of these issues had been reflected in the terms of the March 23, 2009 peace deal. Another reason why this fighting by the M23 erupted and has been going on for years in Congo's east is the alleged continuing role of Rwanda and to a less extent Uganda in seeking to maintain covert external influence and control over areas of eastern Congo, both as a buffer against threats emerging from Congolese territory, especially from the FDLR, and as a mechanism to defend the entrenched economic and security advantages felt largely by a Rwandan-linked and often Tutsi local elite. 
This elite had taken root during the domination of Eastern Congo by the RCD Goma and included control of trade routes, mining sites and large areas of grazing land. The wider region borders Rwanda, Uganda and has a huge traffic of commercial trucks carrying goods from the Kenyan port of Mombasa through Uganda to Goma and Bukavu in the DRC. Controlling the border towns provides an opportunity for M23 and other rebels to raise additional funds through informal taxation. Keep in mind that this region is also rich in terms of natural resources. Some of the fighting is over control of Eastern Congo's vast natural resources including diamonds, gold, copper and timber. The country also has other minerals, cobalt and coltan needed for batteries to power cell phones and other electronics. When M23 started fighting in 2012, it swiftly established control over some of the areas that had been CNDP territory, although both its scope and fighting forces were far smaller. M23 repeatedly defeated the Congo's FARDC and unlike the CNDP, took Goma in November 2012. The M23 rebels held Goma for 10 days before voluntarily withdrawing under international pressure. Also despite their proclaimed objectives, the M23 rebels perpetrated human rights violations against civilians including Tutsi, most notoriously when they occupied Goma. However, in the months after the siege of Goma, M23 was riven by internal power struggles and disputes. It was also significantly weakened after its leader, Bosco Ntanganda, turned himself into the International Criminal Court in an apparent effort to flee the infighting. In 2013, the United Nations Security Council authorized a rare offensive brigade under the mandate of the United Nations Organization Stabilization Mission in the DRC, MONUSCO. MONUSCO was effective in its support of the Congolese army and that same year, 2013, M23 called off its campaign. Since its military defeat in 2013 and barring some minor incidents, M23 lay dormant for almost a decade until late 2021 when it ramped up attacks again. In this instance, the group claims that it was attacked suddenly by the Congolese army after Kinshasa had declared martial law in the provinces of North Kivu and Ituri in May 2021 in a bid to defeat all armed groups that would not voluntarily join a new demobilization program. In this current resurgence, M23 is militarily stronger than in the past. It operates more and more like a conventional army, relying on equipment that is much more sophisticated than in the past. Military sources have hinted that M23 is currently able to operate around the clock thanks to night vision devices and equipment. M23 also has longer range weapons such as mortars and machine guns. All of this leads to speculation that this equipment would have been supplied by a well-organized army, which is why Rwanda security services are suspected of supporting M23. It's also important to understand that the DR Congo's national army is extremely dysfunctional, corrupt, ill-equipped and low on morale. It is said the army is riddled with parallel chains of command, leading to rent-seeking, the widespread theft of soldiers' pay, endemic indiscipline and abuse of the civilian population. Rather than effectively deal with armed groups, most notoriously the Rwandan Hutu FDLR, Congo's army has been repeatedly accused of collaborating with them, including in the trading of illicit resources. The continuing conflict in Congo's eastern territory has caused tension between DRC and Rwanda to heighten. The DRC and its president, Felix Tshisekedi, has repeatedly accused Rwanda of backing M23, an allegation Rwanda has repeatedly denied. This accusation is supported by the African Union, the European Union and the United States. A United Nations report from 2022 indicated that the Rwandan Defense Force, the RDF, is partially responsible for the revival of M23 by supplying both military and operational support despite Rwanda's denial. In return, Rwanda has accused Congo of once again supporting Hutu extremist militias. According to Rwanda's president Paul Kagame, dismantling the notorious Rwanda Hutu rebels, the FDLR, is a security priority for Rwanda. 
tensions between the two countries were exacerbated when Rwanda, on 24 January 2023, shot at a Congolese fighter jet, accusing the Congolese army of violating its airspace. In a promising move, Rwanda and Congo agreed in late November 2023 to a pact negotiated by the United States to bilaterally reduce military presence on their shared border, reduce hate speech, and refrain from efforts to affect one another's political systems. Despite the agreement, political animosity between Kinshasa and Kigali was reinforced on December 9, 2023, when Congolese President Felix Tshisekedi compared Rwanda's Paul Kagame to Adolf Hitler. In this resurgence of M23, the regional organization East African Community, the EAC, had been spearheading efforts to end the crisis. Disappointed with the EAC, Kinshasa reached out to SADC for help. In the latest development in this conflict with Congo and M23, on Monday 12 February 2024, South Africa's President Cyril Ramaphosa announced that his country was deploying almost 3,000 troops as part of a joint effort by SADC to quell the fighting in the Congo. These forces have been deployed alongside soldiers from Malawi and Tanzania, and they are helping the armed forces of the Congo to repel the M23 rebels. A South African peacekeeping convoy patrols the road between Sake and Goma in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. It's part of a South African regional mission supporting Congolese soldiers to protect the North Kivu capital Goma from advancing M23 rebels. Thousands of people have been forced to leave villages around Sake during heavy fighting. Thank you for tuning in. This has been Tatenda for African Biographics. Until next time, cheers. Have a good one.